Welcome to The Boom Studio, a show where we unpack business ideas, share entrepreneurial journeys, and interview some of the brightest innovators in South Africa. Speaking of which, on today's episode, we're chatting with Andrew Kloppers. Andrew is a prestigious business owner, motorcycle enthusiast, and founder of Ionix. In this episode, Andrew shares his journey from smoky diesel engines to electrifying motorcycles. We'll also talk more about what it has been like for Andrew to be one of South Africa's first electrical motorcycle pioneers. And Andrew will fill us in on why you shouldn't underestimate these powerful machines and how they are even giving their petrol-driven ancestors a run for their money. Hi guys, welcome. So I've uh, invited Andrew Kloppers, the founder and driver and everything good for Ionix. Uh, how's it? How are you guys today? Hey, Travis? Hey, all. how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Um, yeah, so uh, we got Andrew on the show uh, and uh, it's uh, Ionix is a, is a super exciting uh, brand that, that he's uh, behind. And I have the privilege of um, working on the brand uh, together with him. And we, we've been chipping away over the last few months on this. It's something that uh, Andrew started some years back. And it's uh, sort of transforming and uh, pretty exciting. So I thought it would be awesome to uh, chat to you a bit, Andy, today and get uh, some uh, behind-the-scenes insights and to understand your where you're at in terms of everything so uh travis is a x racing or current racing enthusiast of some measure trav yeah i i i think i lived in my dad's shadow who was a, a avid race car driver but um yeah look andrew it's nice to have you on the on the show with us yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's been a pretty exciting ride uh, um, with Ionix this far. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely keen to hear some insight from you guys. Cool. Um, Andrew, so I was just thinking, I know that you and Alistair obviously go way back. And so there's a lot of, you know, history there. But maybe That's for right. the folks at home listening or uh, and myself even, maybe you could give us a little bit of a background, just sort of an overview of who you are, what you're working on, and, you know, sort of where you come from. Okay, so I've been pretty much in the automotive repair business uh, my entire adult life. I got into repairing diesel engines, trucks, um, also all, you know, along that line. And, uh, yeah, I just sort of got a bit tired of, smelling diesel fumes you know you, you walk into a workshop and the truck comes in and it's it's not running very well and it just the smoke's just billowing filling up the place and you know it's it's you you over time you get a bit sick of that and uh i just started looking into other avenues you know and watching the electric market come come to life with the cars and, and then you know i'm absolutely mad about motorbikes motorcycles i've been racing motorcycles probably since the age of 20 and uh, I was getting into extreme enduro and finding that I was lacking certain skills and trials riding is kind of where you get those skills and uh, I, was, I was looking at getting into this and I thought tell you know I don't always want to travel 50 kilometers to go ride my motorcycle so what I did is I found electric motion which was an electric motorcycle electric trials motorcycle I thought you know, with these bikes, you can actually train in your backyard because there's no noise. Uh, you know, you can get around literally in a built-up area. I mean, you can go to the, the park down the road and ride these bikes. And, you know, not many people would, would worry about it. So that's kind of where I got onto even, it. And um, Even the, even the non-biking enthusiasts would appreciate you. Is that what you're kind of saying? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, so I can go and do what I love um, and not uh, disturb the peace. Yeah. So that's kind of where I got into into the electric bikes, and uh, since then I've just been been rolling with it and and trying to develop here in South Africa. Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, you've got uh, you know 
understanding your kind of journey uh, in terms of the automotive repairs industry i mean you know the ins and outs of of diesel or, or uh, combustion engines but really so i mean for you it must mm. be wildly fascinating to to understand the the electric side of things i mean well, I think essentially it'll probably put me out of business on one side in the future <laughs> because, uh, you know, an electric motor, there's not much that can go wrong with it. It's, it's one moving part, whereas on the diesel okay. engines, you have multiple, multiple moving parts. Um, you know, at any one point in time, one of those components can fail and, you know, then you have to repair Whereas an electric motor is just straightforward and, and, and easy to work on, I suppose. Well, if you ever have to work on it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's definitely, it's definitely the way to go. I mean, if the technology is there, I think there's not much going to stop it in the future. Yeah. And uh, something that I've kind of become aware of is in terms of regulation, uh, you know, regulations being placed or on sort of combustion engines, it's almost making them even more complex in a way. Uh, Absolutely. That... Okay. Absolutely. I mean, I had a photograph. Uh, it was a meme of a engine from probably in the eighties versus the engine of today. Mm. And the amount of wiring valves, solenoids, switches, and all the stuff on these motors, they're almost becoming throwaway engines nowadays because they are so complex. And that's purely because of the Euro emission standards that they're trying to comply with. Okay. So they're getting to a point where they're just incredibly complex. And I think the only viable solution going forward is electric electric propulsion okay. so maintenance obviously on an electric is is one of the big things that that you know is a huge plus for anyone in comparison for sure. okay for sure yeah i mean if you if you look at electric your maintenance obviously on the motor there's there's nothing on the battery side there's nothing um on the drivetrain there will be maintenance i mean on a, on a motorcycle there's a chain and brakes and stuff but if you look at the car side of things, um, even the brakes maintenance has, has been widely reduced because you have regener regenerative braking. So when okay. you're hitting the brake pedal, it's the motor that's slowing the vehicle down. And you, so you're not actually using brakes, you're using the engine. Wow. And then while you're doing that, you're feeding power back into the battery. So wow. you get that on, on vehicles and on bikes as well. So essentially when you're braking, you're charging. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, it's brilliant because there's no wasted energy then, you know. So the energy you're using to go forward and then you're recuperating that energy when you're braking. It's, wow. it's a win-win. Yeah. That's insane. So, no, Andrew, yeah. you're our very own South African, like authentic South African Elon Musk is basically what I'm – <laughs> yeah we can we can always try hey <laughs> but yeah i definitely i definitely love what he's done i think uh i think he's driving a you know very good market and you know whether whether the market will the electric uh, propulsion will come via batteries in the future we don't know but i think one thing for certain is it's it's you know all, all sort of modes of transport are going electric hmm Mm, okay and um so one thing with 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 what you're doing i mean the reality of the situation is uh you're positioned in africa um and uh it's it's a fascinating uh space to be in for many reasons and even more so on the electric side i mean electric would solve so many things in africa on so many levels yet the generation of electricity is is a major a major challenge yeah um so so how how uh i mean we're talking about electric vehicles being cars primarily i mean there's big discussion around that bikes for recreation sport um you're obviously um ahead of sort of the game in terms of the african market and that uh, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a tough market to crack. I mean, there are problems with, uh, with infrastructure here, um, which will hamper the, the adoption of, you know, electric vehicles. But yeah. at the same time, you know, if, if we can almost in a way, you know, become self-sufficient, I mean, imagine driving to work and you've got a 
your, your, your office is powered by solar panels and inverters and the rest. You drive there in your electric car, you plug it in. During the day while you're at work, you're basically charging your car for free. Um, yeah. Same thing, uh, you know, when you get home. Um, I mean, I think Tesla's, Tesla's currently doing this is where you can actually take that power that you've put into your, your car. Basically, you've charged your car at work all day. You can go and uh, take your car home, plug it into your house and power your house at night off the, off the energy from the battery. So essentially, <laughs> you know, you could be getting free energy on both sides. Um, so, yes, there is that avenue you can look at in Africa. Um, and I suppose over time it will eventually go that route. Um, mm. But, yeah, there's, there's, there's just so much in terms of technology coming through that I yeah. think e either way, I think we, we will find a way to, to make this work. Mm. Mm. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Trav, yeah? Yeah. Andrew, so it's it's pretty interesting to hear more about, you know, um, your thoughts on electrical engines. And there was something that I was, you know, thinking about before this call. Um, just bringing it back to motorcycles for a bit. Now, I've got a memory of being at Zumbugs and being on my brother's 250cc two-stroke Kawasaki motorbike. And I'm not sure if I did two or three backflips on, on a ramp. I can't remember exactly the details. Mm, yeah, but there sure. was something absolutely amazing to just take this bike, you listen to the noise of it, and just get the feel of that two-stroke engine as, as you're riding around. Um, how, do, how does it compare to ride you know, an electric motorbike? Because I feel like the, that kind of feel goes hand in hand with, you know, these kind of Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's actually a very different ride, if I can put it that way. So the beauty with electric is you have instant torque. So the torque of the motorcycle is generated from zero RPM. So your, max, okay. your peak torque comes from zero RPM, whereas in a car or a motorcycle, it would come further up. So as you, as you accelerate on a motorcycle, there's that instant pull, which is it's something else. I mean, it puts a smile on everybody's face. So just to give you an example, I had one of these electric bikes at a dealership the other day. And the salesman, he was looking around at the, at the bike and he's like, you know, he wasn't sold on electric. Here. You know, for him, it was just like, oh, he has these toys again, you know. And I said, have you ridden one of these bikes? And he says, no, I haven't. I said, you know, what? just just get on it and take it. Just take it for a spin around the parking lot. You know, you could just just get a feel for it. I tell you what, he was changed after that uh, that experience. You know, he came back with the biggest grin on his face. He's like, wow, I can't believe it. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's such an amazing experience to, to feel that instant pull as you, you know, as you twist the throttle. So, yeah, mm. I can't say that they're the same as a, as a two-stroke and the noise is not there, um, which has its benefits. And, uh, you know, I came off a two-stroke as well. I used to race two-strokes and I love them. And, you know, there's nothing like the smell of two-stroke oil in the morning. But, um, you know, I think... Electric also has its own perks, uh, you know, and things that, you know, can give you different experiences, but at the same level. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting point. And am I right in saying, I forget the name, L, of the, what was the race that, um, maybe okay. you can just bring a bit of context. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so, I mean, one of the big achievements now on sort of the international scene uh, which is which is a pretty big point, uh, Andrew. Would be the Scottish six-day uh, trials uh, performance there of the electric motion uh, in the in the most recent uh, event. Um, you know, so so what worldwide? Do you see a growing uh, swing towards electric? Are people being more interested? I mean, what you describe now is is a sheer sort of excitement factor um, at this this sort of uh, quick response uh, power at your disposal, and and a lot of the other technology that you, I mean, you've touched on the braking system and that. Um, where do you feel outside of South Africa and generally in the whole? Uh, do you think uh, electric's making decent inroads um, overall? Yeah, absolutely. So in Europe, it's huge. It's massive. Um, okay. You know, I think the mindset in Europe is very eco eco conscious, and right. uh, trying to you know adopt new technologies that are cleaner and uh, 
you know, better so for the played, environment. That plays a big part as well. Yeah, so that's the big drive in Europe. And I think the fact that they're making these bikes so good, you know, like you said, um, Electric Motion did the Scottish Six Days, which is probably one of the toughest trials events in the world. It's insane. And they managed it's to insane. pull it off, um, you know, and get a top 20 position first time out. Um, where they're doing distances of 180 k's a day on an electric motorcycle. Okay. So obviously there were battery swaps, and uh, you know they made use of the regenerative braking on the downhills. Um, so they had ways of, of of getting this done. But the bikes are just so good and so competitive now that people are realizing okay. that you know what, this is really it's the way to go. Okay. Because range, range would be one of the initial sort of uh, factors that would count against electric, but. But that yeah. that case in particular kind of is starting to disprove, or it's starting to show that that it, that is definitely improving. Uh, so the range, yeah, the range is a, a sort of like I call it a barrier to entry. You know, people okay. are, are worried that they're going to go out and have some fun and then end up having to push the bike home. But the the, <laughs> the range is definitely improving um, yeah. every year. I mean, the batteries are, have larger capacities and can go yeah. further, and they improve efficiencies. So they are definitely from where they were five years ago when I started to where they are okay. now. There is a massive leap forward. Okay. So what is the current range? Sorry, Al, what is the current range more or less, uh, Andrew? For so so the bikes I'm currently selling are not necessarily road bikes. So you're not going to ride them from A to B. Uh, they are trials bikes and sort of enduro bikes. Call it that. So. In range, you talk more, I suppose, in hours, not kilometers. So if you're going to go and ride trials, you could probably get about three hours worth of riding before you would have to recharge your bike. And um, on the other model, the Escape, also about three and a half hours more sort of enduro riding where you can do tight trails and obstacles and, you know, sort of more extreme type of riding. So you're talking about three hours worth of riding, you'll get off, off a battery, off a charge. Um, Andrew, Electric Motion is the brand that you, you as Ionix, is, is really in favor of at the moment, and, and it's what you're bringing into South Africa. Um, what, it, what are your thoughts on that? What, what are your re you know, what's the reason behind that? There are other, there are other electric uh, bike brands and some of the other main, uh, you know, other brands, uh, KTM has, has electric option. What is your, what are your thoughts around or why have you kind of gone for electric motion as, as the brand you, you're bringing in? So electric motion just have such a quality product. You know, they've been developing this, this product uh, probably for the better part of 11 years now and just tweaking it every year, making it better and more suited to a certain application. So they're probably the only motorcycle out there now that has an electronic clutch oh, sorry not an electronic they used to have an electronic clutch they've now fitted a mechanical clutch okay. so what this allows you to do is basically generate inertia in the motor so if you want to say jump up a huge ledge or something and you need that punch uh, you're able to do that you're able to pull the clutch in rev up the motor and then dump the clutch and uh, no other electric motorcycle currently has that so they're definitely leading the way in that market. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, in terms of a competition, you know, these bikes actually have a purpose. You can use them in a competition. Whereas um, with the other bikes, you know, I suppose they're more just sort of leisure market. Whereas with electric motion, you could probably actually go out and compete on a, you know, on a very competitive level, on a okay. top level. Yeah. Okay. And they're also just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the French do uh, make incredible designs. They are really, really pretty to look at. Oh, awesome. Oh, great. And uh, so in terms of the South African scene, uh, you got a bit of success alongside uh, the SA Champ, SA Tri Trials Champ. Yeah. What's, what's happening there? That's pretty exciting. Yeah, so... In the beginning of the year, the, the new models were arriving, the 2022 models, and uh, I'd seen what um, Electric Motion had done worldwide in terms of winning the, they won the e-trials championship. So basically, they beat all the other manufacturers on the e-trials, um, and that's a worldwide thing. 
And I thought, you know, it's time to, to give the South African market something to, to look at. So I got a hold of Brent, who's a South African champion. I think he's won, he's won for probably 15, 15 times over Brent, his career. Brent Lariche. Is Brent that, Lariche, yes. That's a and French I to, That's a bit of a uh, French surname there. A bit of an odd possibly. connection. <laughs> that actually really quizzed him on that one. Um, and, you know, he's been very interested in the electric bikes. So I chatted to him and I said, you know, Brent, you know, why don't you, wouldn't you be interested in, in giving the national uh, series a, a go on one of these bikes, you know, to compete on? He says, wow, well, you know, that's something. Uh, let me take the bike, give it a, you know, spend, spend a week on it, and then I'll, I'll give you an answer. And, uh, yeah, I was, I think the following week he said, you know what, let's do this. <laughs> he says, absolutely wow. love the bike. He says it's definitely competitive. And, um, yeah, so he's actually subsequently won every event he's entered. And uh, the first two rounds of the National Trials Championship, he – he won it. Uh, no one else came close. So, yeah, electric motion has actually, in its own way, made a little bit of history here in South Africa. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. No, fantastic. Well, awesome. Uh, so um, <clears throat> I think I think one of the things and uh, in terms of, you know, you, you chatted a bit about infrastructure and, and some of the hurdles for people really adopting uh, – electric um and uh something we've uh, internally kind of been been chatting through and maybe we you can share some more on that andrew but uh there's a there's a concept um called value monopoly and uh, whenever you are uh coming into a new market or competing against uh, other sort of rival brands there's, there's strategies in that and i think it would be interesting just to touch on some of the sort of sh strategy there for, for listeners, uh, both followers and uh, of Ionics and biking enthusiasts and just generally uh, business owners. Um, so, so this is a concept we've kind of been sharing a bit on and working on uh, inside Ionics. Um, and I think the idea of a value monopoly is uh, – Basically, if you find yourself competing uh, with other uh, businesses and products, then to instead of just uh, fight, you know be caught up in a kind of a competitive war or price war or anything like that, really find what are the values that your market would respond to and and what would be the things that they would value the most, and then surround them really with. A, a holistic bunch of values as opposed to just competing product for product. Um, so one of the things that I think there's huge potential uh, in this space is from an Ionics point of view. Um, and you touched on that uh, with that whole kind of lifestyle picture you, you, you put out there, which was great. Um, you know, going to work where you work is charged by the sun and you are then charging your vehicle, which is charging where you live. So there's there's unlimited possibility, really. And um, so I think maybe we can just chat about that, this whole thing being a lifestyle. And Ionics looking to really deliver on a wider range of things than sort of just the bike itself. Because the bike itself, as exciting as that technology is, and, and you know, it is the future, of, of biking or transportation in general. Um, what, do, what do you see as kind of the potential uh, points to create added value around that to support this lifestyle? Because really when you're moving to electric, you're not just buying something different. You are kind of changing the way you live. Change, change uh, the way you do things, absolutely. Yeah, so what, what are some thoughts there that you from from discussions and stuff you know you've been working on and what would you what would you say is a potential for your well, ionics in future one of the things that uh, i've had to do for this um sort of racing thing that i've set up with uh, brent larish is you know charging the motorcycles in a remote location can sometimes be challenging you know if, if you're riding these off-road bikes um out in the middle of nowhere 
or if you go camping somewhere and you're in the middle of nowhere and you want to go take your bike out on a ride and you come back, there's not necessarily any, any place to charge them. That's, that's a challenge. So what I've actually done is I've put into my van, I've put in a, a charging system. So basically, if the bike is running low on juice and you, you just want to top it up, the facility is there. So possibly, you know, a more simplified solution of that, that uh, people could buy, probably purchase together with a, with a motorcycle, uh, like a power pack okay. or a solar generator of sorts, um, yeah. that they would then take with them when they go riding. And then when they stop to have a cold drink with their friends or or go back to the car park for whatever reason, you know, top up the bike for 20 minutes and then then head off again. So okay. I think that would definitely definitely be an angle to look at. Okay, so so actually Ionix kind of uh, supplying charging uh, charging stations or mobile charging stations just to further enhance the experience. Um, and and one of the thing things around that is, I mean, that's not just limited to your bike. Then that's essentially a standalone piece of uh, equipment that there can are be so many so many bike. uses i mean literally to go anywhere where you would require power you have that you put it in your boots and off you go if you come home and there's load shedding and uh, you want to power x y and z i mean there's enough power in these in these power packs to to do whatever you want to do i mean just a stupid example um we had load shedding here not so long ago and uh, i wanted to make my kids a ready-made meal so I took the microwave, took it to my van, plugged it in, and made my kids a ready-made meal. So yeah, these these portable solutions are definitely definitely an option we can we can look into. Yeah. Andrew, uh, I think. Sorry, I was just going to comment on how it's almost as if that you know, if you think about a car or a motorbike, a, a diesel engine or a petrol engine, it's quite a standalone thing. Hey, like it's sort of like on its own. You know, you have a tank of gas, you can't use it elsewhere. Whereas it's almost like this adoption to electrical engines, you know, it's got a wider array of purposes. Like you like you said, we, we're just using the load shedding example. But I think more and more, there's going to become this intricate network where you go into your house, it's fully solid. It powers how you get around, you know, it powers how you live. And so that sounds to me the, the like, the spark of what's going on with Ionix. It's sort of like, you know, maybe we not there just yet, but that's kind of the idea I get of the future of moving around and, and home and, you know, all the rest. So yeah. it's pretty exciting. It's definitely. Yeah. Trying to create a lifestyle around, around the products. And Andrew, I think you've, you've talked, we talked about the bikes. Um, Ionix is also bringing in uh, Molly cell lithium ion batteries You've, uh, you know, building battery packs for different purposes uh, is also something. Um, so, I mean, your interest is, is, you know, anything electric and the whole engineering side of it. And uh, I mean, there, there's some pretty exciting uh, things happening there as well. What's, uh, where do you see sort of the lithium ion battery potential lying at the moment are they okay, and so also just single... going to these sorry going to yeah, these sorry, mobile very, very uh, well. units sorry i missed the going, last bit there going to them the, just just in connection with the mobile units uh, charging is i mean what are the batteries in the, you know in that kind of uh Charging yeah, station. So your, your lithium ion cells, the molly cells, you know, or the lithium ion cylindrical cells that are, I'm bringing in as well, they found in almost every single portable device, not necessarily in that form factor, but uh, this whole electric revolution has been, been driven by lithium ion cells. So I brought them in, uh, bearing in mind that, you know, there are people wanting to uh, build their own custom uh call it motorcycles, cars, uh, you know, backup power generators also all have these lithium ion uh, cylindrical cells. So just bringing those into the market in, in raw format. So it gives people the opportunity to sort of make their own projects and uh, be creative and, and, you know, sort of get into this whole technology. Whereas, you know, as opposed to actually buying the completed unit yourself, you know, you get a lot of DIY enthusiasts who want to, 
uh, create their own solutions. And I'm kind of giving them, you know, that option with these batteries. Okay. Awesome. Oh, great. Thanks, uh, Andrew. Is there anything else from your side that you want to uh, want to cover? Because I think uh, I think we've got a pretty ex you know good picture on uh, where things are at, and uh, it sounds exciting both locally and internationally in terms of the electric bikes and the potential and just the general lifestyle around it. Is there anything else you? Uh, Feel you want to get uh, off your chest? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure this is the correct uh, format for that? <laughs> within no. within the framework of electric. <laughs> no, all I think it's all all is good. Eh? It's, it's it's been good chatting to you guys. Thank you, yeah, Thank no. you so much for, for having me on your show. It's no, been it's really great. good. Trev, anything else from you? I I just had uh, two last questions, Andrew, if you don't mind. The first one was, are you thinking of bringing in a sort of a recreational kid's bike? Um, because immediately when I heard motorbike and no noise, I saw an opportunity for my seven-year-old son that a noisy bike would probably, you know, we'd, we'd avoid buying him a bike for that reason because of the noise factor and are you thinking yeah. of possibly bringing in any kind of road bike something that you can use you know to nip around town okay so on the kids bikes uh there is stuff coming up in the in the future i can't really give too many details on it but just to touch on that i have had my um my sons grow up on electric bikes for kids and it was a win, absolute absolute win you know, my son Daniel started riding his little electric bike at two and a half years old. So he learned to, well, he was balancing before on a, on a little balanced push bike, but at two and a half years old, off he went and he was riding this electric bike around. And fortunately, having a little bit of space in my yard, um, he rode his bike pretty much every day. He'd get on that bike, he would ride it around the yard, and he'd get back in the garage, he'd plug the charger in, and, you know, that was it. So it was, it was, it was so easy for me, and it was so easy for him. You know, it was not like, Dad, I need you to help me start the bike or, or Dad this, Dad, that. He was completely, he learned complete independence from a very young age. So, yeah, I've definitely, I've got some, some ideas with kid bikes in the future, but I can't uh, disclose anything as yet. But it's, it's definitely, it's, it's an amazing market. You, you took me back to my father's garage where you'd have to, I had a little 50cc that he got me. And there was a choke involved and there was the fuel gauge that you had to turn. And yeah. then that you had to kickstart that thing and often <laughs> it didn't start. So I can and if imagine it stands the for a while, it, Yeah, if oh, it stands for yeah, too long, then, then you can't get it started and it's a mission. And yeah. And no, then you flood the thing when you try. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Jeff. Just carry um, on. No, no, no. That's cool. Yeah. You just take me down memory lane here um the yeah. the the second question i had andrew was say i'm i'm an avid rider and i'm interested now in purchasing a bike or maybe even before purchasing a bike i want to get the feel for it how do i is, is there a way for me to contact you take a bike for a test drive ask you questions what sort of that process look like yeah so the contact details are on my website if you get a hold of me um, I'll definitely respond as soon as possible and then arrange for you to come and ride, ride the bike. I mean, we can, we can go somewhere or we, you could come to my spot. So I've got plenty of space and, uh, yeah, just ride the bike because to be honest, you know, to look at the bike online and, and see what it does, it doesn't give you the, you know, the true reflection of how awesome they really are. But once you sit on that bike and you get the feel for how they, you know, it's, it's, you can't explain a feeling you get when you climb on a motorcycle. And with electric, it's one of those things you have to feel. And then I think once you've once you've been on the bike, you, <laughs> I think you will have made up your mind. You're hooked. Uh, Great. <clears throat> there was a there was a question. I think we just skipped there. Um, with about in terms of a road bike. Uh, mm. Oh, sorry. Yes, I missed that one. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I will definitely be looking at road bikes in the future. Um, currently, in our market. You know, in South Africa, we generally travel quite far. 
I mean, you do get guys who commute short distances in town, but I think in general, a lot of people travel pretty serious distances on a daily basis. So I'm just waiting for the right time and the right product that would suit our market. And um, I'll definitely look at getting into that. Um, you know, there are quite a few um, barriers in terms of getting the, uh, all the permits and, and documentation correct to bring in the bikes. Uh, I do have the facilities for that, but I'm just not ready to, to pull the trigger on that yet. But it's definitely something I am looking into. Um, you, you have a you've you've got a bike that you've uh, up until now sold and uh, brought into the country the the mace. Um, what's your thoughts around that bike in particular at the moment, Andrew? So that bike, I see it's uh, mostly used in a, a estate environment, um, or basically wanting to cruise up to the the coffee shop to go have a. A Sunday, you know, a Sunday coffee and a, and a breakfast. Um, what's beautiful about this bike is, first of all, the design of, of, of the Mace is absolutely stunning. Um, but also the fact that it's completely quiet. So there's no drivetrain on this bike. So your motor is in the rear wheel there. And it's, it's a surreal experience where you're basically cruising down the road. And all you hear is the tires rolling on the tarmac. And it's, it's just such an incredible experience. Um, I personally love to, to ride this, this bike around the estates. You know, if I feel like just getting out on like a sun, sunset cruise, it's, uh, it's kind of where I see this, this bike in the market or, or getting around larger estates, uh, visiting yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so, so I've had the, the opportunity to experience this bike. Uh, I live uh, at an estate and uh, unbelievable. And um, yeah, Un incredibly stylish looks good and it's just one of those things when people <laughs> you come past and you know it's like what was that that's an absolute so, head turner and what for me what was what, that what got me into this the, the mace the brand the mace is it's the design i mean i have a appreciation for beautiful design and i think in terms mm -hmm. of the simplicity that they pulled off with this with this bike uh, I haven't seen anything else in the market that comes close to the, you know, the beauty of it. Mm. So I think they just, they just really, really nailed it. And uh, yeah, for me, that was the attraction. It's, it's just the looks. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Andrew. Thanks for your time. I think uh, it's been insightful and definitely inspiring and exciting uh, as to where things are headed. Um, and exciting for Ionix as well. Uh, we're seeing some good uh, traction and uh, a great response uh, to, to the brand and stuff that's been put out. So I think definitely over the next few years, as the tide turns and uh, there's a move towards electric, uh, Ionix is going to be there in the <laughs> leading the way. So uh, yeah. thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. I'm looking forward to an electric future. <laughs>